Hello, everyone. I'm glad to see you all here. Thank you very much for uh, the interest to this uh, virtual study tour devoted to um, your access initiative Arab for Ukraine. That is actually part of uh, Science for Refugee activities as a whole. Today we will see um, very few presentations and most of the, um, the tour will be devoted to demonstration of uh, available uh, materials, tools, uh, web pages for supporting refugee researchers and researchers for, from Ukraine and to the discussions. So we will start with welcome and uh, we will introduce ourselves to each other and then uh, we will take a look what are these bridge projects and what is the use for your access from them. Then we will have a little demonstration about the available tools and we will concentrate on the most important part that is war in Ukraine and our Euraxis response. Then we will have a demonstration of websites that uh, provide information. And we will see why it is so important to cooperate with other initiatives, networks and projects when we serve refugee researchers and when we answer this incredible situation uh, in Ukraine. And we will discuss a bit about uh, the initiatives, about your interest and what and how we could, could cooperate between ourselves. So let's start with me. Those that you don't know me, I am Svetlana Dimitrova and work for Sofia University as a project manager. I'm full time your access. I operate uh, on behalf of the Bridget organization for uh, your access Bulgaria, that is Sofia University and um, we are pretty much active uh, network here. I work for a long time with the refugees, visited a lot of camps and um, I'm happy that there are other interested people here in, in this uh, study tour. So let's continue with the rest. Those that I see are Christina, Ivan, Martina and Magda. So who wants to start to, and Lydia, uh, who wants to start uh, presenting themselves? Martina, please. Talk briefly about yourself. Why did you join this uh, virtual study tour? And to what extent you, you are familiar with the scholars at uh, Science for Refugees and Era for Ukraine? Hello, I'm Martina Bilkova from Euraccess Point of Slovak Academy of Sciences. I've been working there for half, for a year and a half. Um, I'm not very aware of this um, science for refugees, so that's why I would like to know more. Uh, Slovak Academy of Sciences is a part of the initiative um, Science for Refugees. Uh, no. Science for Ukraine. The science for Ukraine, yes. So, yes, the Slovak Academy of Sciences would like to to support Ukrainian researchers. So we'll see what, what we, what we how see How can today. we yes. cooperate? How can we that? help? How can we cooperate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you, Martina. Yes. And uh, Christina? Oh, hello, my name is Christina Muragnova and I work uh, as an officer, the Euroxis Point uh, 
the SAS officer. I am colleague uh, Martina, uh, and our team uh, provides uh, some general information and administrative support for researchers and uh, students uh, coming uh, to Slovak Academy of Sciences. And uh, we provide support with uh, necessary documents uh, for visa application and also temporary residence permits. And uh, I, my motivation to join this virtual study tour is uh, to learn more about possibilities, how uh, we can uh, provide uh, sufficient support for Ukrainian researchers, especially in this uh, specific board time, and uh, especially for male researchers, uh, and uh, what type of documents we, uh, they need and how we can help them uh, to enter uh, the society public. Thank you very much. Uh, Lydia. Yes, uh, hello everybody. My name is Lydia Bertan. I uh, represent the BH organization, the Academy of Sciences of Moldova. And Lydia, the, please put your mic uh, closer to your mouth. Yeah, ah, this way. Yeah. So you hear me well? Yes, yes perfect. And uh, uh, we are very interested that uh, we know about, uh, uh, we support the um, initiative Yera for Ukraine from the beginning. We think that it's a very good uh, initiative and uh, we support it. Uh, we know that. Uh, um, from uh, uh, Svetlana, from uh, uh, Bulgaria, is uh, uh, is a very good uh, a, a very good administrator of this uh, this project, and I think that during this uh, this study uh, this tour visit, uh, we should uh, learn a lot of uh, works because in uh, our country we have a lot of uh, refugees about. Uh, 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 900,000 uh, of them, but uh, I want to underline uh, that most of the researchers uh, which are ca who are coming in our country, uh, they prefer to leave our country and to go to, uh, to the EU country. You know why? Because in our country the salary are very low, uh, very low in our country, uh, are not very Big. And uh, uh, when they ask about uh, the salaries, of course, they, uh, they are interested uh, only to go through our country to the EU country. But uh, in spite of this, we, uh, we have a lot of uh, calls, of, uh, telephone calls from other uh, people, from simple people from Ukraine. Uh, uh, and uh, we have a very good uh, relations with administrative uh, uh, central organizations and uh, we help them in case they address uh, um, questions about schools about uh, about universities about uh, less uh, about uh, language how to learn the language uh, Romanian language uh, about uh, different uh, life uh, questions from uh, everyday life that's why I'm uh, very interested in this project because I want to know uh, how uh, specialist Svetlana is doing this work because uh, he has a lot of experience, not only in this project but in another project too. What about the refugees from the from the beginning of the Euraxus? Uh, project? And I think that uh, I should uh, have a lot of interesting things to learn uh, uh, through this, uh, uh, this uh, visit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lydia. And now Martina from uh, Austrian Agency. Austrian Agency for Education and Nationalization, Europe of Austria. Um, I have been involved in the Bridge Project. Um, yes, we cooperated know each other. a lot. <laughs> and you will see later on about our Bridge experience. And um, um, I've also been working uh, with uh, refugees, with student refugees in Austria, uh, with uh, the project that I'm responsible for, which is OED for refugees. 
And for, um, for the students and scholars uh, from the Ukraine, we have set up a platform uh, that uh, is dedicated to help um, students and scholars uh, who are interested in, in studying or doing research in Austria. So, uh, and we are also involved in counseling um, uh, potential students uh, uh, for the Austrian higher education uh, landscape. And so I, I'm here because I'm interested in, in what you're doing and uh, what other uh, projects are and how can we, um, how can we cooperate, you know, and see what other initiatives are doing. I know there are plenty of them. Thanks okay, for thank you invitation. very much. Thank you very much, Martina Ivan. Hi to everybody. My name is Ivan Munin. I work at the Agency for Mobility and EU Programs. That's the Bridgehead Organization for Eraxis. And I am at the Eraxis Service Center in our Eraxis department. Uh, and I'm also very interested in this project. Uh, I studied Ukrainian for, for some time. And I'm, so this topic interests me also personally. And I want to know more about it, uh, the era for Ukraine, and I, I was not familiar with it uh, up, up until now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ivan. Magda? Hello, everybody. My name is Magda Wiswotska, and I am uh, in uh, the bridgehead of Irish Euraccess uh, under Irish Universities Association, full time Euraccess, have been here for 15 years with the wonderful network. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to mention a few very good initiatives in Ireland. So in Ireland at the moment, we have 33,000 displaced Ukrainian um, nationals. Uh, obviously, loads of them would be also people who would qualify as students to study in Ireland or also researchers and all, all sorts of other, you know, professions and people. And what is very good in Ireland is the fact that um, the Minister of Higher Education in Ireland, uh, you know, the, the, the just launched a very good initiative. This is the National Help Desk for uh, Displaced Ukrainian, for displaced students and researchers in Ireland. And uh, this initiative is um, very serious. They employ, I think, six people um, to manage this Help Desk Ireland so far, I think, um, received over 900 queries in relation to researchers, um, you know, positions and, and how to study what documentation is needed. And this is hosted by Menuf University, which is famous of having also the uh, Science for Refugees program. Uh, Euraxis Island was also involved actively. I was, for example, involved in creation of uh, frequently asked question list from researchers perspective. So this is up and running. In addition, we have also very good funding, um, you know, resources dedicated to researchers, you know, so matchmaking uh, situations when they are looking for to join uh, various research groups and the funding is following. So it's something which is very positive, which is created in Ireland and I am very happy to be part of it from the Euraxis Ireland perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you, Magda. And then Magdalena. Hello, Magdalena from Slovakia. You mean from yes, Sarah? the other Magdalena. <laughs> Sorry, just wasn't sure if you mean me. Uh, I am ahead. here to learn uh, about what uh, assistance can we offer to uh, Ukrainian refugees and how can we integrate them. I am a regional coordinator for Slovak Academic Information Agency. And I work a lot with uh, assistance to international researchers and international students. So I'm hoping that uh, this uh, webinar will give me uh, information basis on how to work with them, how to inform them, where to direct them and so on. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you very much. There was one more participant that uh, was listed here, Beate. But I don't see her. Maybe she has problems with uh, the connection. So later on, we will invite her and now to present herself. And now let's continue. How it started? It started with the bridge projects. First of all, I want to ask you, have you ever been to a refugee camp? 
just open your mic no. and tell me. No. 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 Okay. Within the bridge projects, I visited Moria camp on Lesbos, Greece. Actually, one of the three camps that are there. It's a depressive uh, experience. It's only 50 kilometers by sea, closest uh, point to Turkey. And a lot of refugees are trying even now uh, to reach Greece by boat that is uh, actually half of them not very well working and uh, a lot of refugees die. So um, in the memory of uh, dead refugees, the citizens of this island and uh, the local authorities decided to build these chess figures that are, as you can see, uh, half of a human uh, height tall. And uh, currently they were presented at the city center of Mytilini, Greece, but uh, currently they are placed in, in the yard of the internal yard of the university, at Aegean University at Mytilini. They are prepared of uh, two color uh, life vests of uh, dead migrants and it's a really stressing view. So being a migrant is not a pleasant thing. And when the European Commission started the Science for Refugees initiative, uh, we asked ourselves, what can actually your access do for refugee researchers displaced and researchers at risk? And this, the answer is very simple. It is just the same thing that we do for the third country researchers. This is one of our main activities in uh, our everyday your access life so we we can practically we have everything to serve them with the little differences i wrote here on the slide these people most of them are uh, with psychological trauma that needs a special support and different type of help so bear in mind, whenever you interact with a refugee researcher, displaced researcher, it might not be visible at the moment, but they have, do have this psychological trauma and they need psychological support. So you may uh, diplomatically offer such. If you have at the university, at your organization, if not publicly available ones, just for, for the, the first time, then they will need more support in this regard. But once the connection with a psychologist or psychiatrist is established, then you, uh, can be sure that they are uh, well supported. This is where you can find the Science for Refugee uh, link on the main your access portal. It is included in the job section and you may ask why so? Why it is placed there? Why it has no separate section uh, since the refugees, especially now, uh, are so many. This was the decision at the last uh, wave with uh, uh, refugees from the Middle East. And it was placed in the job 
section because practically the sign of uh, the initiative plays a very important role when we post uh, um, job offers, grants, etc. Uh, etc. funding. The refugee ref researchers are able to recognize offers that are uh, open and uh, welcoming for uh, refugee researchers by this sign. So for this reason, it is placed in the job section because most of them are looking for a job uh, almost immediately when they get into the uh, receiving country. And this is the way we can communicate with them. So make sure you, you always mention this sign when you communicate with the refugee researcher. Uh, the sign also marks possibilities for Ukrainian uh, researchers, there is no specific sign for them. So they are also available for Ukrainian researchers that are in your countries. So please make sure you, you point this out to them. Maybe in the future, this uh, section will be uh, um, separated in order to uh, demonstrate that uh, we at Euraxis and in Europe are welcoming the refugee researchers, just as it is right now uh, shown by the sign uh, of uh, Ukrainian flag. And this is the job of uh, our future hub for, for, that is called Science for Refugees. What kind of useful tools and information are available on the portal? If you haven't looked at, please go on this section and make sure you can be, uh, you are informed and you can be a helpful uh, guide, guide them, guide, guide, and you can provide a helpful guidance to refugee researchers that look for information, tools, and training. So the first point is, uh, of course, jobs, but the training is uh, not uh, less important for them. So please do guide them to this. Also, there is a very interesting guide for refugee researchers. Uh, we will pay a bit more attention to it. But let's first see what did the bridge projects. These two projects uh, were uh, conducted under the uh, Science for Refugee Initiative. And uh, original title is a bridge for researchers in danger going to Europe. The first one followed the Balkan path. It was based on a real case and the countries that were on the Balkan path of uh, refugees from Middle East united their efforts. And uh, this uh, researcher was served by contact points from three of these countries. Uh, I have mistaken. It's an Iranian researcher, so sorry for the mistake. So this project ended in 2021. And what was uh, the heritage of uh, our common work with these countries that you can benefit from? Most important are the online tools for um, academic and non-academic uh, mentors and coaches of refugee researchers. Here you have the link and you can explore them on your own. Bridge 2 and in cooperation with your access job 4 produced this guide that I mentioned a little bit before. 
Guide on Labor Market Integration of Refugee Researchers. This guide could serve refugee researchers, but also it could serve very well the staff. So please take a look at this guide. Um, there is a lot of section, there are a lot of sections and I will not stop on each one. What I want to point out here that is very important, you have already to use modular training program that was created under these, uh, um, with, in cooperation with these two projects and our Austrian colleagues were very active and very productive uh, uh, partners. So um, they prepared this guide and the program. What, however, is the most important uh, outcome result of these two projects? This is the currently informal hub that will soon become a formal one, Science for Refugees. And how it happened, we didn't call it uh, hub at the beginning. We just finished the project. We had contact with more than 300 refugee researchers. We had very good contacts with diaspora networks here in Europe. Uh, we had contacts uh, and cooperation, very good cooperation with NGOs, UNHCR sections by country. With local authorities, we have cooperation anyway. So we also had at the end of the project experience. And what is more important, the whole network was behind us. So the question was, should we stop serving researchers? Not of course, we should continue operating and this continued. That's why I'm saying it, it was operating, although it was not called the hub, but we still continue to cooperate on serving refugee researchers. What we are doing actually right now. We serve new refugee researchers that are looking for support. Uh, usually uh, those that address your access are uh, either didn't know anything and they learn at the um, entrance of the university that there is a, a, a department or office that will help them with that or they learn from their friends and colleagues about your access support. We offer them training, except for the uh, usual service for third country researchers that we offer. We offer also training and participation in events of the network. And we invite all of them very cordially to the your access mentoring program. Now I will stop sharing and we'll show you where these uh, tools are based. Just for your information. Um, this is your Access Bulgaria out, uh, website and as you can see, this is the link. It says a lot about the outcome of the bridge projects. There are a lot of training courses and materials, also webinars that were available. Also, the same thing is available uh, as a link. For instance, you can see now on the main portal. If you go to science for refugee section, at the end of the section, you see links to two of these uh, uh, events and also to Inspire Europe link, uh, project um, 
links to their uh, to their um, outcomes and results, let's say. So what you can find on this uh, section that is for refugees, they can search for jobs, they can register to join the community and to use the um, uh, internal functionalities of the portal. They can look for a body and they can post their CV for uh, looking for the best opportunities. Just right after is uh, the link to the Era for Ukraine initiative. And here how it starts. Actually the buddy system here, um, which is the first thing that was offered, is not very well working. The, the last two year uh, statistics was uh, kindly provided by Dalila and I presented it at the uh, NAND conference when we had session for uh, Science for Refugees. And um, obviously without administration, without a coordination of uh, someone that is taking care, the, such an initiative like buddy system could not um, reach uh, highest possible impact. Only 80 for the last two years, um, refugee researchers joined this uh, body system. I don't know about the outcome um, and whether there is a, a feedback collected, but uh, I suppose at least those 80 researchers uh, received some uh, reasonable help from their colleagues in Europe. Uh, here you can also see a short guide on the body system. And when it comes to the refugee researchers, as you saw in the presentation, there are uh, links to the jobs for also for the training courses. And uh, uh, available support from career development centers. Also, they lead to the local NARIC institutions and DG Migration and Home Affairs. NARIC uh, works with the recognition of diploma. And here we come to the most important um uh, section that is actually the guide for refugees and now we come to the your access austria portal where they uh, created this nice guide and what is really important here is this guide for the support staff and as I said, at the end of this guide, you have already training program. So you can take the program, even ask for the, um, for trainers from uh, your access through the book, the trainer system, or just those that uh, uh, supported this program through the uh, bridge projects and uh, your access top four activities related to refugee researchers and just deliver it. You don't need to do anything else. Find the room, invite researchers, talk to the uh, trainers uh, to take uh, their uh, available time too, and that's it. So I, I really uh, very, um, very much, uh, uh, I'm trying to share the presentation again, very much advise you and recommend you to use this uh, 
uh, guide and training program. So next, we will continue with the war in Ukraine, Ukraine and our Euraxis response. How it started? It started by uh, adding a single page uh, with not unified design, with not unified sections, etc. stuff at the national portals of the surrounding countries, plus uh, Bulgaria, because at this point, we needed just to provide such an assistance, just to provide a place where they can find something useful because they were looking for. Uh, the structured uh, response was done a bit later, but these uh, three pictures of uh, the portals of Poland, Czech Republic and Slovak Republic show how it was at the beginning. This is the Bulgarian one that we immediately create. You see that the, the uh, structure is totally different in the three, uh, in the four uh, countries, but we did it, as I said, just because we needed to show something. Uh, what is important about uh, your access Bulgaria page, that is the only one that uh, is kept currently. Uh, all the rest uh, moved to the uh, common format that was provided by the European Commission. Uh, here you can see two testimonials from Yuri and Hannah. And if you need this kind of uh, illustration somewhere, you can just uh, um, provide links to these two videos. Yuri was, uh, is actually in the mentoring program and currently uh, he works with a Bulgarian mentor. He chose, uh, he asked two, but only one responded. And Hannah arrived in March and um, is based in Sofia currently. We found uh, uh, accommodation through Bulgarian Academy of Science. And now I'm trying to um, solve the issue with the job because she has a job, but it is not related to her specialty. And how uh, was the, uh, as I said, the structured um, response? Uh, the uh, uh, European Commission created this section that is marked with the uh, Ukrainian flag as you can see, and where each of the countries is uh, represented by five sections. And they are unified as well. This is about uh, housing and accommodation, job offers, uh, link to the contacts of the embassy, and also what kind of other services we can provide. What is very important, uh, together with the European Commission, we created this uh, common email address that is uh, placed on, on the portal. And whenever they write to this email and look for a general information or for directions on how to uh, do something in uh, some country, we receive this email it comes to our uh, general your access email address in uh, Sofia University, and we forward it to different points. If there is a need, of course, if we cannot answer. Also, we created a collab in the extranet collab section. This is how it looks like. I just posted a post about uh, these two videos and also very important is uh, this three month report of operation of science for Ukraine initiative. 
we will talk about it a bit later. So if you're interested, you can join and talk to your colleagues that work on this uh, uh, initiative and that, that uh, are interested to share experience, information, etc. Why did we need to react so fast? What is the difference with the previous wave of researchers? The difference is huge. Within the first four months of the war, we welcomed more than 3.5 million people from Ukraine and the region. Don't forget that our refugees also from Belarus, from Russia, and they are uh, subject to our support too. So from Ukraine is uh, the uh, highest number of uh, refugees, of course. And uh, what is specific in this case, that these are mainly female uh, refugees with children and old people. Because it's understandable, their uh, brothers, sons, and uh, husbands are fighting. And another illustration of this huge number, and uh, to show you why it is so important to take a specific note about it, I will show you what is the current situation in Bulgaria and what was. The, pre, uh, the previous situation with the previous wave. Currently, approximately a bit more than two, 200,000 uh, refugees arrived from Ukraine to Bulgaria. Some of them left, but about 95,000 uh, still stay in Bulgaria and look for support. And I can say that no single um, refugee researcher, we are proud with that uh, refugee actually from Ukraine was placed in a camp. All of them were welcomed, all, all of these 200,000 were welcomed in our homes, in hotels at the seaside, and uh, um, the foundations that uh, work and NGOs that work with them also supported them to find a, a safe place to stay. Totally different case was in the previous wave that lasted much longer and that, you know, we are just on the Balkan path and a lot of them came through actually very many big part of them illegally and from those that stayed um, there are no uh, not uh, very uh, clear uh, statistics because once they get uh, the status many of them leave but in general we have uh, applications for a status and those that got status, uh, as you can see, about uh, not more than uh, 2,000 people, more, mainly from Syria. About 1,000 of them, we suppose, this is the uh, official information that about most probably 1,000 still stay here. Where it is 1,000, where it is nine, uh, 95,000 people. What is the situation with uh, researchers? Until 2021, people that arrived and stayed here in Bulgaria with the status were only about 3% with higher education or researchers, any kind of university instructors, for instance. In 
2022, only for these four months of war, we have more than 40 Ukrainian researchers that asked our support. Many IT engineers from Russia, much more than uh, Ukrainians, but you understand that from Russia escaped not only female ones, but also male. Well, from Ukraine, here come only female researchers and about 10 from Belarus. So can you compare this uh, number only for four months with the previous wave? And another type of illustration is uh, this calculation that uh, is based on uh, the number of researchers as a whole in Ukraine that are about 60,000 and approximately 35,000. This is official information on the uh, Ministry of uh, Education and Science in Ukraine website. And if we calculate that there are uh, about 2,700 universities in Europe, each of those universities has to open about 10 positions in order to welcome the refugee researchers if only one fourth of them comes to our countries. You understand that this is not possible. So the answer to this wave should be global, should be enough flexible and very, very timely. So we all need to react very fast and to be very flexible and not to count only on ourselves. Now I will uh, demonstrate, let me see what is in the chat. Ah, Magdalena is leaving. Okay, thank you, Magdalena, for joining us. So I will uh, stop now the, uh, sharing the uh, presentation and I will share again the uh, <laughs> Do you see your access Poland? Yes. Okay, thank you, Martina. So as you can see, your access Poland uh, portal directly transferred to the type that was unified by the European Commission with the translation in, uh, in uh, Ukrainian. Same was done by uh, Slovakia website, although it is slightly different from the, Euro, uh, the other European portals because it is not hosted by uh, uh, the European Commission as uh, all the others, it is um, hosted on their own. So um, the whole design is Pretty much similar, but not equal. Your access Czech, Czech Republic website also moved to the uh, general uh, unified system, but kept also their own. So as you can see, it is in um, uh, Ukrainian and is uh, providing links and uh, also they uh, write something here in their, uh, in English. And the last website I want to show you is uh, the Bulgarian one. 
We have two versions in Bulgaria, in English and in Ukrainian. What is very important, we uh, stress here on Science for Ukraine initiative, and I will tell you why later on. It is structured this way. National initiatives, institutional initiatives, etc. And as I said, at the end, you can see these two testimonials. Uh, and this is the main portal with this uh, different sections and with links to the national portals. So now we, we go back to the presentation and Uh, I will explain you now why it is so important to cooperate with other initiative networks and projects. First of all, it brings synergy. Synergy brings much higher impact. That means that it allows you to reach much larger audience. For this reason, we cooperate with other projects, with other initiatives, with uh, other organizations too. Here are listed some of them that we work together. This is uh, SAR Europe. This is their project Inspire Europe. Uh, this is, uh, here we should put also CARA uh, Network in UK, uh, Science for Ukraine, Etc. Where is Bulgaria in this context? We participated in uh, two bridge projects. We are very much engaged with the uh, Euraxis Hub Science for Refugees, and we are running the Euraxis Mentoring Program, Shape the Future of a Researcher Coming to Europe. Uh, also, we are pretty much at the point to uh, open uh, for those that are interested on the same two internal mentoring programs for organizations. But if you are interested to learn more about the mentoring program, you please visit the uh, website of uh, uh, previous uh, virtual study tour that we offered and that was devoted to this mentoring program. It is in the same section in the uh, extranet. What we did actually in the bridge projects, uh, we uh, kept this contact list of refugee researchers because we were responsible for training. So the list of uh, contacts was uh, the biggest list of contacts. Everyone else has, of course, contacts too. But uh, the project list was kept in uh, Sofia University. So we continue communicating with them. We cooperated a lot with NGOs and volunteer organizations. We regularly uh, arrange um, event for refugee children as part of the European Research Night activity. We are member of the UNHCR Working Group Integration in Bulgaria, where participate a lot of NGOs and higher education uh, organizations. We have a regular meeting, uh, regular meetings with uh, this uh, integration group. Uh, we coordinate our efforts and activities uh, pretty much often. We meet twice a year, I think except for the joint uh, events, other joint events that we do. And at Sofia University, we opened a master program for social workers with refugee and migrants. And we are also um, um, member of this academic community group for support of refugee integration. Uh, integration, 
um, and it started in 2019. We have um, a national portal for, for this activity that participate all of higher education organizations. And here in uh, Sofia University, we offer since 2020 a computer literacy, uh, literacy course uh, for migrants and refugees. What were our follow-up activities? We became uh, members of the uh, working group at National Commission for, for Protection Against Discrimination in 2021. We worked very hard on the uh, welcoming uh, Ukrainians. We use the Euraxis national structure to work together. For instance, we have uh, in Euraxis Bulgaria shared file with all requests. So all of our contact points, we all can see, we prepared it at Sofia University, but all have access uh, to this shared folder with documents and with um, list of contacts and everyone can uh, see and offer some support for accommodation, depending on where this researcher is based and what is practically the request or some uh, temporary job at uh, our organizations because here is the point to uh, say, I will mention it once, late, once more later again. What is needed right now, this is a temporary job. This is mostly virtual for those that are still there in Ukraine, as it is the mentoring program, but virtual job too, like courses, etc., delivered by Ukrainian researchers for your universities, or if they are in your countries, this need to be a temporary job for three or six months. This is what is the official policy of uh, Ukrainian government and what the researchers as well ask for sure because they want to uh, go back in their country once uh, the war is over. Hopefully it will be soon. That's why they ask for this short period of uh, engagement, but we never know. Most of the uh, comments and uh, analysis say that, unfortunately, it will be not so short. Uh, Science for Ukraine. This is a volunteer initiative. Some of you mentioned here that you practically uh, also cooperate with it. That is a very good news for me. This initiative started with three people. Four months later, more than 150 work in this team. What is very good that they improve the platform regularly, not only the information, but the platform itself. They cooperate with your access and they exchange job offers. So whatever is posted on your access portal, please do post it also there. I am the national coordinator of science for uh, Ukraine uh, initiative, voluntarily working for it. And I uh, published not only for Sofia University, but also for uh, whole Bulgaria sometimes. So please follow my example and do the same. Uh, the, the most recent outcome is the three month uh, of supporting report. This was uh, out just um, two days before our virtual study tour. So. If you're interested, the link is here in the presentation to see how it went in different countries. It's global, not only European. 
uh, your access mentoring program, just last numbers from a uh, few days ago. Now they are a bit changed, increasing, of course, but uh, it's a very good tool for uh, Ukrainian researchers that look for support, especially for those that are in Ukraine. We have, thanks to the promotion of uh, Science for Ukraine initiative, we have a lot of uh, uh, Ukrainian researchers joined the mentoring program. And uh, one of those is actually Yuri, that uh, um, made uh, one of the testimonies. But they join not only as mentees, I'm happy to see that uh, there are Ukrainian researchers that joined the mentoring program as mentors. They are based uh, in European countries and uh, they uh, went there a uh, long time before the war started. So they are now available for other Ukrainian researchers to support them and to uh, um, advise them on how to um, proceed further in their work. So don't forget to promote the program in order to Ukrainian researchers in order them to benefit. And finally, we cooperate um, with SAR. We just became a member and our uh, establishing meeting was three days ago. So we are also using support of this uh, network in order to uh, help Ukrainian researchers. And now we came to the point of the discussion. Before we start it, I'm ready to answer to uh, your questions if you have any. Just raise hand or better uh, open directly your microphone because I uh, don't see very well. Okay, Magda. Hi, Svetlana. <clears throat> Thanks so much for a very, very good and informative session. It's very, very impressive and good. I, I, I have loads of questions, but I don't want to ask maybe everything now, but in terms of the science of refugees, this wonderful initiative, which is growing, how to encourage people to upload the, uh, you know, the job offers and things is, is it something easy they can go directly on the website or they, they need to register? Because I, here in Ireland, universities sometimes come in to me saying, we have these positions and you, for example, Ukrainian researchers are welcome to, uh, to participate in the- uh, You mean on science for Ukraine? For, for Ukraine, yes, 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 science for Ukraine. You exactly. go on on the website i forgot whether there is a need of registration but i don't think so i think uh, maybe there is but it is a very very simple one and you just post it there is a form and you just post it so it's very easy to promote i can easily very promote easy. People. you can find also on the web page uh the coordinator national coordinator volunteer for ireland i think they are even two of them, not sure, but check. Yeah. And the, you can ask them to publish uh, for you. It's, it's really, sim really simple. Super. And do you know, in terms of the recognition of diplomas, has something been specifically advised for Ukrainian researchers? Do you know about it? Uh, or they need to go to this now? Recognition of diploma is quite a complicated issue always. You know that. Uh -huh. But in these cases with Ukrainians, I think each country, for instance, it is uh, in Bulgaria, we do have a lot of cooperation with Ukrainian universities and um, recognition of diploma is not an issue at all. But I think in all other countries, they accepted this uh, uh, approach to provide uh, a temporary job like a guest lecture, like uh, uh, working on a joint project or working on other project, uh, just temporary for three or six months uh, 
at lar uh, longest uh, without any diploma issue. This for researchers, for students is different. Mm -hmm. For students mm -hmm. is different and they need uh, the same uh, issue as, as, as any regular student. Okay, and maybe last question. I, I think, you know, if, if in terms of Ukrainian displaced researchers, uh, you know, we have this obviously logo for um, uh, for um, uh, for refugee researchers for, for jobs. You know, jobs. also era for Ukraine, there is a logo. I can send you all. I will. But put it is in there the a special icon for only for Ukrainian? Yes, era for Ukraine. There is a special uh, logo that Super. is uh, posted on the website, and I can send you and. Uh, or I can put you, I better put you in the presentation uh, in the final version so that you can uh, then uh, take it from there. Very much. Thank you so much, Svetlana. Thank you. Right, right here. So I lower my hand. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I have two questions, if I may. Please, First question is, go ahead. Um, you talked about the hubs. Your access hubs, uh, science refugees. Uh, do you know if there is anything concrete planned for the new project? Yes. And what? Uh, yes. How would that yes. look like? Uh, practically, uh, we are at the moment preparing the proposal, and I am the uh, leader of this hub. I proposed it to the uh, committee that collected. Uh, um expressions of interest and um within this hub i will invite all of the partners from bridge projects and surrounding countries of ukraine so that uh, we can unite efforts in uh, further uh, evolving of the this informal hub that is actually the first one in uh your access although we didn't call it hub, but it was like that. Mm -hmm. Both projects were actually a hub for serving. <laughs> okay, that, that, that's interesting, thanks. And uh, the other question is, because as you pointed it out, um, there will not be enough um, places available in academia. Um, so are there any um, considerations made in terms of how we can integrate uh, refugee scientists also um outside of academia any yes. like we did with the bridge or yes uh, any uh, money for mentoring or or internships or mentoring for sure could be offered through the uh, shape the future of a researcher coming to europe program mm -hmm. uh, this is general integration program there they can receive uh, specific uh, advice and uh, training as well. And there is also another program that is uh, in your access hubs. Uh, it started in uh, top uh, four, but uh, continued in your access hubs project. This is the Rebecca program that now it's uh, um, next edition practically in your access hubs uh, currently finish gathering mentors and mentees and started working not too many ukrainians as far as i know are engaged uh, but for sure there will be another uh, option in the future project that will start from the new year most probably in january uh, although the commission said they will make effort to start in December, even if possible. And there will be another edition, but not only. We intend to use the experience from uh, uh, Bridge 2 project and to offer, at least this is my proposal to, um, to the coordinator. I will see later today whether it will be accepted uh, to have a similar program with the paid internships in uh, uh, other sectors, not only industrial, but also public sectors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be so tremendously important. Because I, that's, I know. 
I you know, know that. that's why, because that, and that's because what we our was, was very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have all the documents, we do have all the experience, uh, Rabaka and, uh, uh, oh God, I forgot her name. Uh, the other lady from uh, Sweden are uh, very Brigitta. Support, uh, not Brigitte, the one that participated together with Rabaka in our uh, Bridge 2 project. But anyway, it's not important. Uh, they are very supportive and they uh, will actually provide us with all of the documents and will um, give us their uh, uh, shoulder to, to help us okay. in preparation of this uh, internship program. That sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? I have one question. Uh, okay. Uh, please uh, tell me, Svetlana. First of all, uh, thank you very much for the very interesting and useful information uh, uh, through this study visit. And mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, please, uh, can we, can I use uh, the guide for refugees and guide for staff, for, for staff you have mentioned? Of course. Is, uh, is it possible? It is online, it is on the European portal and all uh -huh. the links are here in the presentation. Uh -huh. So once uh, I, uh, we finish, I will publish it together with the video. Video will be ready maybe tomorrow to be uh, posted, uh, uh, actually not I, but uh, Simona will do, the coordinator of the virtual study visitors uh, program. I will send uh, her everything. Unfortunately, she is with COVID right now. Uh, she is here in the uh, tour, but mostly listening. She's uh, not in a very good shape to participate actively in the discussion. And so and you will have everything. Uh -huh. But in any way, you can always contact me and ask questions uh -huh. okay. and support. And another question. You mentioned uh, through your discussion, through your presentation, about uh, the uh, interaction uh, of uh, Ukrainian children in the researchers' night. Yes, uh, we yes. offer a specific event for them every year. Uh -huh. Okay, it's a very good idea. Thank you for your idea. If you have a researcher night yes, event this yes, year, yes, you yes, can yes, make a separate, um, let's say two uh -huh. or three hours Action for them. And uh, I can give you the links. I will put them in the presentation to uh -huh. see what we did uh, previous times. And uh, Please, if it is possible, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, of course, thank of you. course, I will. Thank you. And let's go then to the discussion. Uh, I suggest that uh, we all take, uh, we are not too many, so we all take uh, the floor and um, express opinion on this uh, for uh, uh, questions. So uh, whoever is interested or just as last time with the introductions, I will ask you. Huh? So Martina. You may start, you take time if you need to think. <laughs> yes, yes, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the initiative, um, of course, and we have also worked on, on, on the guide for refugee researchers. Um, I mean, with the uh, Era for Ukraine initiative. You, yes, you, as yes, said we are you there. were, yes, yes, you definitely yes, we are there. were. We have information there. We also yeah. have a platform on our study, yeah, uh, yeah, study yeah. in Austria. Um, website. Um, so we are, uh, we are we are certainly in, involved in that. Um, and um, any Ukrainian cases that um, um, we're most I'm, I'm working mostly with students. Um, we have uh, we definitely have uh, requests from from scholars, and uh, we inform them about the platforms that are available, mostly also about uh, science for Ukraine. We also highlighted that um, platform to our higher education institutions because we believe it's great. Um, mm -hmm. It's very easy to use. You can easily submit uh, a job offer. Okay. Um, so um, we think um, that is good because we noticed that there are so many information platforms and 
it's good to have all this information mostly on site for Ukraine so people can really look for it and, and, and find a job um, or a funding for them. We have also uh, in Austria, we have also a database on scholarships and research grants. This so was we have, very interesting. Do you have any national funding for it? Uh, we have we have a grant actually that is available for um, for refugee researchers Africans. and for uh, students coming from uh -huh. Ukraine. Um, so um, we um, we do have. But that they applied. Sorry for interruption. Yes. Uh, they applied themselves, or it is like in Poland, uh, uh, they uh, uh, go practically the hosting organization apply for this grant and they uh, provide them later with. No, it's really scholarship. Um, um, the the scholars and the, uh, the students can apply. I will I will share. I will share. I'll Wait, share a link with you because stop. there are actually more um, more scholarships available uh, for um, for students and scholars from the Ukraine. A lot of um, uh, universities, but also research institutions, they offered um, grants right at the beginning. Unfortunately, we've heard that a lot of or, are already filled because um, there is a lot of demand. Um, it's so... understandable wherever it is a competition. Oh. Just let me see. Not all can benefit. Okay. So, um, okay, this is the German version. It's not helpful. <laughs> okay. Just give me a minute. Whenever you're looking for something, it, your, your it's system is like not working. <laughs> Meanwhile, you tinkle on- I have it question. now. <laughs> okay. okay. So that's um, that's the link. Mm -hmm. And there is a special scholarship that's called the Ernst Mach Ukraine Scholarship. And there okay. is also funding. And also what we are trying to do with students, especially that are still um, in the Ukraine, Mm -hmm. um, they can come through Erasmus Plus, for example, so mm -hmm. to take advantage of a mobility grant. Okay. And uh, do you think we can do something else apart from what we already provide? You know, the thing is, it, it all comes down to funding. Yeah. You know? Will there be additional funds? Uh, and and that's uh, that's the main that's the main thing. Also, when it comes to to inclusion, for example, of uh, of students uh, at higher education institutions, we have to think about um, German language skills. For example, we know that about uh, sixty thousand um, um, people from the Ukraine will need um, uh, German language courses. You know, so that that's a challenge. You have mm -hmm. to provide these courses. We we have uh, heard from from colleagues at uh, high education institutions in Austria that they have opened up um, their German language courses, but they're mm -hmm. already filled, mm -hmm. and um, there's a lot of demand. So, and then of course we have we have requests from the, the challenges recognition, like you said, mm -hmm. um, and a huge challenge also uh, for students who have almost finished their degree in in Ukraine. And then come to Austria, and uh, they need a little bit to finish fully. And yes, this it's, really it's very challenge. difficult. Very yes, difficult. I know. And, um, I know. We're not even uh, talking about students from third countries. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. So a lot of things that are still, uh, you know, negotiated, and um, we'll see. Yeah, but it will be, it will be solved. I'm sure about that. In Bulgaria, it's a bit easier because um, only with a few lessons they can, this uh, similar language, Slavic language. And just like in Poland, with some um, few lessons, they can start communicate, not fully, but enough mm -hmm. to, for everyday need. And then with a month or two, of language course, uh, they can be really on the labor market. 
Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you interested to participate in the future hub and the future activities as you were active before? Yes, we'll discuss that. We have several um, meetings and I think uh, we'll have to, we have new colleagues uh, who will start so okay. we'll, we'll definitely talk about that. It's it's on our it's on our agenda. Mm -hmm. You may be part of uh, this uh, heavy activities with the Rebecca program because uh, in Austria you can offer a lot of uh, job at the industrial organizations and public institutions too. Okay, and the last question. Was it useful? Was it interesting? I know uh, maybe Simona will collect uh, uh, your feedback later, a structured one, but uh, for now, just. Yes, very much, very much. It was also interesting to hear that you became um, a member of uh, Scholars at Risk Network. Yeah. I think that's a great thing. It's an, so uh, congratulations on that. Yeah, it's the right time. Uh, previous time, there was no reason because there were no uh, researchers to stay um, long here. Mm -hmm. So now it's totally different case. So for us, it's important. We cooperate for years already with Inspire Europe project and uh, also with Scholars at Risk. So it was the right time, you know, this is a paid participation in this uh, initiative. So uh, for uh, our country, it is not um, with the low standard of, uh, lower standard of life uh, as uh, Western countries, it's an important issue. It's not a little donation actually. Yeah, no, no, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Very awesome. Okay. So the next one was Christina to raise her hand. Christina, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank you for a very interesting presentation and information. And I would have one more question uh, about some specific case. Uh, if you have any concrete uh, case or, or experience uh, with Ukrainian researchers, uh, especially males, uh, how they can uh, in this time leave uh, their country for the reason of study or uh, doing the research abroad. Uh, if there are any specific exceptions uh, in the uh, law to allow them to leave their country uh, because we are dealing with admissions and uh, every country has different entrance rules and conditions mm -hmm. uh, how to enter uh, the country uh, for the third uh, country uh, residence. Uh, but, uh, we have uh, some problems or we are facing uh, some difficulties to admit uh, researchers, uh, males, uh, with, with, uh, who are uh, within some uh, research programs. Uh, they are accepted, but how they can live now their uh, country. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Um, thank you, Christina, uh, for the question. Actually, um, the most difficult case is with the PhD students. PhD students uh, that are in the middle of their study, for instance, um, cannot very easily accept it anywhere. However, those that are at the very early stage, let's say one or two months of their PhD study, they could be offered to start from the beginning somewhere. Just forget about these two months spent in the uh, study and uh, start from the beginning. With the uh, going out of the country, it's uh, difficult. For students, it's uh, if they are accepted, they need to get a um, document from the hosting organization where they will study, continue their studies. And with this, they are allowed to leave the country, especially uh, 
for male. For female, uh, there is a, no difficulty. Even this uh, paper is not needed. But in other cases, they take it. Uh, male students, they take it. They go to the um, military offices. And once they get the permission, they can leave officially the country. Otherwise, they make effort and some of them go illegally, some of them. Yes. We do have such cases. Uh, for instance, we had a PhD student uh, who was interested to continue uh, his studies in um, uh, Varna Technical University at the Black Sea. Uh, my colleague from Varna was very uh, insisting, very uh, hardworking on this case. And she finally managed to arrange uh, this paper. But when uh, the PhD student, uh, and also to arrange a place for him at the university, uh, because with the PhD, uh, Mm, you know they are funded by the mm, by the national government, and it is uh, difficult to arrange for them a uh, non-paid position for them. Someone has to cover, and the uni Technical University of Va Varna decided to cover this um, this study. He got the paper. And when he went to the military office, they told him, uh, it's not written from, uh, from when you will start. It was obvious from when he will start, he will start from the autumn. But uh, uh, no, it was written uh, that it is uh, summer, uh, summer, uh, summer school or something like that. And uh, they said it was not written from which day it will start. And they didn't allow him. So she suggested uh, for him um, another way to go to France with uh, some uh, uh, mediator who provides support in getting uh, the right paper, etc. stuff. So we will follow the case in the future and we will see how it will work, but few students were sent the same way to France. And maybe, Christina, to continue, maybe you can share what is uh, your opinion on these four questions. Uh, so I did, I haven't known about this initiative before. Uh, but yes, I'm interested to be part of it. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, we have um, some cases uh, from Ukraine uh, researchers. Uh, yes, it was uh, interesting and uh, I got uh, information uh, where I can uh, search can for more information yeah. and I can, then I can uh, use some specific uh, topics. You can use it later. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much, Christina, for joining us and Magda. Yeah, thank you again, Sitlana, wonderful event, really. <clears throat> so I wanted to raise some interesting <clears throat> comment. So for example, in Ireland, which is quite specific because this is, you know, non-Schengen and also this mm -hmm. is an island surrounded by the sea. So it's very difficult to get into this country. So who who want who can avail of these programs and the, which are developed here would be all, only Euro Ukrainian displaced researchers who are under the temporary protection directive. So they come in, they get this temporary protection uh, directive, which is not e not difficult to get, and mm -hmm. then they are ready to avail of these initiatives. But when they are not here. Uh, still back in their own country or in Poland, Bulgaria and other countries, they cannot avail of anything. 
So for me, it's a little bit of weird situation because yeah. if you fly to Flamingo Island and you have, you don't, you can't get it. You know, you are not, uh, you have no hundred percent, you are not hundred percent sure if you get it because you, don't, you are not under the directive. You you, mm -hmm. you need to come in to get the directive and then to avail of this. So for me, it's a little bit of lack of logic. I they started this um, help desk uh, recently, so I'm really really interested to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. For for students, would be easier because there are a lot of young people you can consider future students, yeah. and you can admit them because they are sitting here. Researchers are different right. because they work. We, we have. I don't. I I am very very interested to see how it uh, goes and how it mm -hmm. develops. Possibly for people who are already here, it would be easier. But it's a little disappointing. You are sitting outside. You are not under this protective directive in Ireland, and you cannot do anything. You need yeah. to come in. How you come in if you don't know where you will be living? It's so expensive country to survive. So it's yes. a little bit of luck. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, this is uh, the case in other uh, Western countries, but unfortunately, this is it. In order to get a position somewhere uh, or use some grants, you have to be there and you have mm. to be there to apply. You cannot apply from abroad. Exactly. So I'm interested, it's interesting to hear that other countries have the same. You know? Yes, but, yes, yeah. especially in France, uh, they are very strict to this uh, point and uh, this temporary job and uh, guest lectures and other stuff is not possible for them. So it's really risky to take this decision and it restricts uh, the potential, uh, you yeah. know, Usually no. they do when they have uh, friends or relatives in uh, these countries, they go there and uh -huh. uh, wait a bit. If it happens, no, they move. If it happens, okay, they stay. Mm -hmm. And also my, I want to figure out here in Ireland uh, how to actually get out of this uh, temporary protection because some people can be really successful in uh, securing very good positions and they don't want to be called uh, protected, protected people anymore. They want to live normal life, but because they are under this protection and they, they, they have different, obviously, um, access to various resources and things. But once they have good salary, they have a lovely, you know, maybe long-term contract, they want to be normal, not the protective species, you know. Exactly, but this is the official it. policy of Ukrainian uh, government. They yeah. have to be offered a temporary job, and uh, if uh, we offer, this is the way they think, and this is in the interest of the country, not in the interest of the individual. And I think it's not uh, very much fair to the individual because everyone wants to settle their life and to continue. They Absolutely. don't want as a normal per person, not, yes, not as a normal person, person. As a exactly. exactly. You know? uh, the only case is to get, uh, uh, the only option is to get a uh, um, work permit, but for this you need a visa, regular visa, and for this you need to be back in Ukraine in order to apply for visa. This is the way okay. it works. It, okay, so from uh, yeah, I need to figure out how the fine tuning in Ireland, how to get out of it to, to have normal things because it, it's possible people get all normal offers and they want mm. not to be labeled anymore. Don't not mm. everybody needs to see mm. I am the refugee. It's not actually, possible. yeah, <laughs> actually, um, I see Matilde is here. I will ask her as well to uh, join us because they have interesting. Uh, um, opportunities in, in France for uh, refugee researchers. Uh, just wanted to tell you that uh, in Bulgaria, uh, there are uh, Ukrainians with Bulgarian roots. There is uh, uh, two huge uh, areas in uh, Ukraine where uh, there live uh, people with Bulgarian roots. Ukrainians with Bulgarian roots, and uh, they can get Bulgarian citizenship very easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for them, this is a solution. We do have a Ukrainian researcher at Sofia University, 
that even didn't get any support from Euraxis. He was just taken immediately at work because uh, he used his uh, Bulgarian passport and that's it. They took him. Yeah, yeah. He entered the country with the Bulgarian passport and this is, this was it. This was the best. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately not everyone is uh, like this. I, uh, please, uh, the others to excuse us, but Matilde is here. Matilde, hi. hi, thank you for joining. Yes, thank you, I'm sorry, I missed just the beginning. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've, I've heard um, I, can, I can present. We have, uh, indeed, we have a program in France that uh, maybe some of you know. It's called uh, POSE in French. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a national program for um, urgent aid of uh, scientists in exile. So it is actually um, under the supervision of our Ministry of Higher Education. And um, so it is uh, basically a grant for uh, French institutions to receive researchers. And uh, in, at Euraccess, we, um, we have a cooperation agreement between this program and Euraccess centers in France. And if um, researchers at risk, uh, refugee researcher has a POSE grant, uh, he can be received in any Euraxis center nearby to help him with all the administrative and accommodation issues. Um, so yes, this is, and, and this, um, this grant is, uh, so it's co-financed. Um, by the ministry and French uh, institution, higher education institutions or research organizations as well, who uh, wish to uh, give a position to a researchers, um, to a refugee researchers. Okay. And uh, from this point that uh, you entered the virtual study tour, um what do you think uh, is it useful for the colleagues for you especially you personally i suppose don't have because you are the bridget and you are based in brussels um, so i suppose you don't have uh, ukrainian cases yourself no i don't have ukrainian cases myself and also in france it's quite difficult to know because we are very strict on confidentiality of uh, the researcher profiles that we received in your access centers so it is not um Common to share information. Yes, yes, because well, we ask researchers if they want to appear in the statistics, and a lot of them actually don't want to be. It's exactly what Magda said. They don't want to be associated, you know, with being a refugee researcher. Mm -hmm. So um, when we collaborate, so every year uh, we suppose. Uh, when they ask us about, you know, statistics of how many researchers actually came to your access to French your access centers for help, uh, mm. it is very difficult to have accurate numbers. I see, I see. Thank you very much for coming to us. And the next. Uh, Thank you. Very interesting. Uh, Ivan. Yes. Um... Well, as I said, I didn't know. I, I knew something about the initiative, but this this virtual study tour was very helpful, and I'm, um, I'm I'm very glad on how much work you are doing and how many resources are are available. I'm interested to to cooperate uh, in the initiative and uh, yes to use the to use the materials. But I'm not aware at the moment that that at the agency there was. Um, a case for any Ukrainian researcher uh, in Croatia. Maybe there are, but they haven't yet reached out to us, but I will check with my colleagues. Okay. 
Thank you very much, Ivan. And uh, the next is Lydia. As I said uh, previously, of course, I know about this uh, initiative, and uh, you know uh, that uh, Svetlana, that you are interested to be part of it. About the Ukrainian ca cases, uh, researchers' cases, of course, uh, they are only transition through our country. We are neighbors with them, and we have special relations with them, with the uh, with the Ukrainian Ukrainian people. And uh, this uh, 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 this webinar was very interesting and useful for me. I said it previously. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Um, you are wonderful as usually. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the other Martina from uh, Slovak Republic. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Please give us your opinion on these questions. Uh, I didn't know about the initiative before. Uh, yes, I'm interested to be part of it because we are your access point at Slovak Academy of Sciences. So I think we, we should be <laughs> a part of it. Yes, we had uh, Ukrainian cases of researchers, but they came kind of individually. It was not uh, via some uh, some initiative or some special special. It was not a special way of coming to Slovakia. Mm -hmm. And also, we have two Ukrainian uh, researchers, men. That's mm -hmm. why my colleague was asking about the possibility to leave Ukraine for men because they were granted uh, Marie Curie's Kolovska co-found uh, grant mm -hmm. last year. And um, we still don't know if they will manage to come to Slovakia or not, but they should start from September and we don't see it very, very well. So I know they they try to arrange the exception to leave the country, but uh, it's not easy, and we don't know exact steps what's what's required. We can uh, support them with uh, some uh, official letter. Official letters, yes. And Just send them it. official letter with stamp uh, by yes, the post. Yes, it was done, but. We don't know what, what's going to happen. So mm. mm, we have Ukrainian cases, but it's special because they are men and uh, we don't know if they would come or not. And uh, yes, it will be very unfortunate if uh, they if could they manage. Mm -hmm. uh, if they couldn't manage, yes. Yes. But so... what we can do? I met a Ukrainian researcher recently, uh, the one that I told you mm -hmm. with the testimony. Yeah. And uh, we spoke a lot uh, about her family, about uh, what she does here, how happy she is here in Bulgaria. She feels like mm -hmm. very well here. Mm -hmm. and wants to stay longer but she is not sure because the family cannot join right now yes her husband is there and when uh, we spoke about the uh, how it will continue when it will stop her eyes were she started yes. trying yes yes so, so that's why I, I think it's a not very uh, good uh, national policy uh, to, to request to Western countries to offer them a temporary job. Mm -hmm. This is not in the interest of the individual. You imagine yes. if you have little kids, you need to arrange everything with the uh, uh, health security, with the uh, personal doctor, uh, with uh, 
kindergarten with the school and this you can you don't know for how long yes it's really uh, and your husband is there and it is really a, a very difficult situation yes i i agree yeah yeah okay do we have so, someone that didn't spoke until now didn't speak I think we all shared our opinion. And by this, I want to thank you all for joining today and for sharing your experience, for sharing your um, opportunities in order others also to share uh, and to spread. That's the way we will reach our synergy, join our call up. And if you need anything, write to my personal email you know all of you i will put it also here but if you write to mobility i also receive i'm always at uh, hand to support thank you very much i also bye. thank you guys and by this we thank consider you. this tour closed thank bye. you bye, bye. bye. bye.